Greetings everybody and welcome to bnd.biz. My name is Alan Thorne and I've been a game developer for the past 20 years. I really like helping people learn how to make games. In this video tutorial for Godot, we're going to be taking a look at areas. We're going to see, step by step, how we can detect whether an object, like the player character or an NPC character, has entered an area of the level. Maybe you're creating a game where the player has to jump over lava pits. If you are, you're going to need to know when the player falls into those pits so that you can deal damage. Or maybe you have a character that's walking through a hallway, a dark and spooky hallway, and then suddenly they're ambushed by characters and enemies and monsters. In that instance, to create that scene, you'll need to know when the player has entered that hallway. There are a ton of other situations in which you need to know when one object has entered a particular area of the level. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can achieve that using the Godot engine. We're going to take this example scene and this white capsule object is going to stand in for our player character. We want to know when does the player character approach this trailer or this caravan? When does the player walk into that area of the level? How can we detect that? This is a really critical and fundamental thing to be able to do in game development generally and in this tutorial we'll see in Godot step by step how we can achieve this kind of behavior so that the engine can respond in different ways. It's really easy to set up and let me show you how, so let's get started. So our basic challenge is to detect when the player enters this region for the trailer here. Now I'm using this Godot scene that I've already set up called the environment test. You can download that from the link included in the video description. Or alternatively, if you want to download this asset, the original asset from Sketchfab, you can also do that by moving to Sketchfab here. I've included the complete link inside the address bar here. I'm going to scroll down in the page. You can see that this is made by Captain Low Poly, and you can download that asset and import that into the Godot engine. In either instance, you can use this file or the original Sketchfab asset. It really doesn't matter. We have a basic scene here with the trailer set up, and I have a player object, which is simply a capsule mesh, and there really is nothing else to it. So we're going to set up this character, and to do so, first of all, I need to be able to detect when he enters this trailer region, which means that we're going to be using the physics system. We need to create an object that's going to approximate the volume of our player character. Right now it's a mesh, but Godot doesn't recognize a mesh as a solid object. It could be something ethereal. So I need to create a solidity for this object. To do that, I'm going to select the player character and then move to the top here and select the mesh menu. Now I'm going to create a, con a convex collision sibling. It's very important in these scenarios when I want to detect when one object has entered an area that we're using convex bodies. That is, shapes that don't cave in on themselves in a very convoluted way. We're going to be using simple collision shapes. So I'm going to choose Create Convex Collision Sibling. Now, when I do that and I select the object inside the scene panel, you can see actually Godot has created that object over here at the origin inside the caravan. So I'm going to click and drag to move that here side by side with our capsule. Now, you can actually see if you take a look at these objects together that this collision object, although it does approximate the shape of the capsule here, it doesn't match up. This object isn't on top of this object, which is what we want. So I'm going to grab the transform component. I'm going to rotate the object 90 on the x-axis. That is 90 degrees. And for the scale, I'm going to set that to 555. The idea is that this mesh and this collider should match up perfectly. Now I'm going to move over here and drag and drop the player mesh into the collision mesh and grab the player. And I'm going to set its position to 0, 0, 0 so that it's resting exactly on top of the collider. That way, when I select the collision mesh and move that around, you can see that actually it matches up and follows with it. Now there is a warning that appears next to this object which tells me that it should be a child of either 
a static body, a rigid body, a kinematic body. In this case, I'm going to create a new kinematic body. A kinematic body is simply a physical object that we, the developer, moves around. So I'm going to move to the spatial node, right click, choose add child node, and I'm going to be adding a kinematic body. Now with the kinematic body selected, I'm going to drag and drop. In fact, first of all, I'm going to find the kinematic body and just move it out over to here ish, maybe about there. And then I'm going to drag and drop the collision shape to be a child of the kinematic body. I'm going to select the collision shape and change its translation to 000, zero, zero because this is always being measured as an offset away from the parent. So by selecting the kinematic body, it is now at the very center of our physical player object. And that's looking pretty good. So we have the player character now over here. We have the collider approximating the player's volume. And then we have the player that is the mesh itself. In fact, I'm going to rename these objects now. So I'm going to rename this to be maybe just mesh. I'm going to rename the kinematic body here. So I'm going to find the rename. I'm going to put K for kinematic body and then just put player to indicate that the player is a kinematic body. Now the next thing that I want to do is to approximate the area for this trailer area here. So this entire area of the level so that I can detect when the player walks into it. This is pretty simple to do. I'm going to move to my spatial node. That is the root node of the level. Right click, choose add child node. And I'm going to be adding here an area. Just going to select that. Now be careful, there is an area 2D for 2D levels, which is basically the 3D equivalent for 2D scenes. I'm going to be selecting the 3D area here and just move that into the scene, bring that slightly further up into the level. It's okay that it's inside the caravan here, that's absolutely fine. You'll notice that there is a warning symbol next to the area object inside the scene view, and it's simply warning me that this area doesn't have a collision shape as a child object. It needs to have a child object with a collision shape on it to represent the extents of this area of the level. So I'm just going to right click on the area node to add a child to it. And I'm going to call this collision shape. I'm going to search for collision shape and then select collision shape and create that inside the scene. Now the collision shape itself also has a warning. And the reason for that is because I've created the collision shape object but I haven't defined any area or any zone. To do that, I move to the inspector, to the shape field, click on the drop down that says empty, and I'm gonna choose new box shape and select box shape. You can see inside the viewport, we have these red handles that I can use to begin to define the box for the collision shape. And I'm just left clicking and dragging those so I can extend that out just a little bit here. If you have trouble selecting the handles, you can expand the box shape and use the extends field. So I'm pretty happy with that zone here. I might bring this over just a little bit and extend that out just a bit more. So I'm pretty happy with the zone that I have selected. I want to know when the player character enters that zone. And that's pretty simple to set up. So to do this, I'm going to select the area object here, the area marking the region of the level. If I switch to the node section under the signals section in the area part, you can see that we have a whole range of different events that allow us to detect when things happen to that area. For example, we have area entered. Now this is going to happen when another area in the scene intersects or comes into contact with this area. Now that's not actually the version we're looking for because we're looking to detect a collision between a body, the player character, and the area. So we're actually interested in body entered. We're interested in that event. To get started and set this up, I'm going to move back to the inspector with the area object selected. And I'm going to move down to the script field and expand that. Click on the drop down and choose new script to create a new script. 
In this tutorial, we're going to be using the C Sharp scripting language to handle this event. We're going to do something really, really simple. We're only going to print a message to the console, but this will show you how you can execute code when a body enters an area. So I'm going to select the C Sharp scripting language. It's going to inherit from area, and I'm simply going to call this area response dot C Sharp, and then choose create. This will now create a completely separate script file here that you can see inside our file system. It will open my script file directly straight away inside Visual Studio Code. If you want to use Visual Studio Code with the Godot engine, be sure to check out the Visual Studio Code tutorial here on our channel on bnd.biz. I'll show you how to set that up. This has already been set up and is ready to code. I'm going to just pretty much delete everything that's inside the area response class and I'm going to create a completely new class that's going to handle the event and I'm simply going to call this on enter it takes a parameter here which is node that is the node that entered the collider and I'm simply going to print the message it's going to print hello world actually it's not going to print hello world it's going to print entered the area exclamation mark semicolon to complete that statement and either control s or command s on a mac to save that code minimize visual studio code here make sure we go back to the godot engine and after editing the script file always make sure that you hit the build button to refresh the project and recompile that code now my code has gone ahead and compiled and everything's looking pretty good there's uh, some stuff on the output here i don't need to see any of that so i'm just going to clear the output window is absolutely fine and select the area I'm going to switch to the node section here and make sure that area is selected now before I do anything else I'm going to go back to Visual Studio Code just to make sure that I remember the name of this function the name of this function is on enter so I'm going to minimize Visual Studio Code and go back to body X body entered beg your pardon and double click in body entered now when I choose body entered, it asks me to specify a lot of stuff here. I'm going to select the area shape because the object that's going to be notified when this object has entered the collider is going to be the area because we've attached our script file to that area object. Now once again, I've forgotten already. Let me go back to Visual Studio. It's on enter. That is the function that I have created here. So down here, I want to make sure that on enter is called. Now there is an option here that asks me, do I want Godot to generate the function for me? I've made it myself so I can switch that off. And then I'm going to choose connect to make sure that's connected up. So now body entered has been connected to this function here on enter. The name must match up here. So it's being connected to on entered. And this matches up here with what we've written in our script file. I'm going to save that code, make sure I save the project, make sure the project is built. Now the next thing I want to do is of course to test out our scenario here. So I want to move the player into this area of volume and that's what we're going to do next. So before I press the play button to start playback for this level, I want to make sure that while the game is playing, I can still tweak the scene and move objects around while it is playing and affect the running or uh, the running item. Now to do that, I'm going to go up here to the debug menu and I want to make sure that sync scene changes is activated. Very important that this is activated, so please make sure that is enabled. Now with that activated, I'm then going to press play on the toolbar so that I can see the playback. It displays the output window and displays the Godot editor. I want to make sure that with this object just moved to the side, it's not really critical what's going on inside this scene editor here. Instead, while the object or while the game is running, I'm just going to move that temporarily to one side to go back to my scene view. Notice the game is still playing here. So I'm going to grab the player character here inside the scene. Make sure that you don't grab the mesh or the collider, but they are actually grabbing the kinematic body again that's very important so I'm just going to move to a view where I can kind of see the manipulation handles for the player character notice it's printing what I'm doing down here but very quickly as I move the player character 
into the volume. And as soon as I do that and release my mouse and the player is now in there, notice the entered area message has now been printed. And also I can see the player character now in the view. The view is updated to reflect what is going on inside the scene because I have the sync scene changes activated. Great. So now we can enter the player character, or rather the player character can enter the volume here and we can have our message printed because this area is now connected to that on enter function through its signal. So that is just how easy it is and with bare minimal code here we can set up an area inside the scene so we can detect when kinematic bodies in the scene enter that area and this is useful in so many different instances. You're going to be using this technique all the time in your Godot 3D games. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. My name is Alan Thorne and this has been part of bnd.biz. Please do check out our channel and subscribe for more game development tutorials. I'll see you next time.